Thank you for the opportunity to present at this, uh, this symposium. My name is Ryan Phillips. I'm at La Trobe University and I'm presenting on our project Preventing Extinction in Bushfire Affected Orchids. This is very much a collaborative effort with Nushka Raita at the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria and Bronwyn Eyre and Tobias Hayashi at La Trobe University. Our project spans three different states. Uh, with collaborators in each, but today we'll be focusing on our work on rare orchids in East Gippsland. We all know that orchids have a, a strong post-fire flowering response, but the response of orchid populations rather than individual plants to fire is a little bit more complicated. We know that Fires during the growing season can be detrimental for some species, uh, potentially le leading to mortality of some plants. And some orchids live in fire sensitive habitats where if they get a hot fire, it can actually convert the habitat to something that's unsuitable for them. For example, this blue tongue greenhood, which prefers spring fed creek lines, if these sites get burnt, you can both have mortality of the plants and then the habitat can be left unsuitable. This project was partly about getting some background ecological data on responses of orchids to fire, but through the funding from the federal government's Habitat Bushfire Recovery Program was a chance to do some applied conservation work on some poorly known species from East Gippsland. Our approach to species recovery was to do uh, post-fire surveys, heavily um, collaborative, I guess, with particularly members of the Australasian Native Orchid Society Vic branch, but then also project partners like Parks and Delt. With these populations, we also did some simple ecological studies and experiments to determine what's what limits reproduction in a post-fire landscape? Do these species need pollinators or can they self-pollinate? Are there issues with herbivory and so on? We then collected seed and fungal samples, which are needed to assist with symbiotic germination, which have been collected and stored at Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria, where Nushka Writer's lab is undertaking propagation for each of our target species. Here's the six species that we focused on in East Gippsland. Two species of leek orchids on the left, uh, one green hood at the bottom, Terrastylus oreophylla, and then three species of spider orchid. All of which are rare, some of them extremely rare, and none of which have very much known about their ecology or really intensive conservation programs supporting them at the moment. I won't go into the outcomes in detail for each of our different species, but here are some of the key points. Caledonia Eastiva, we found at three populations uh, and with an additional population of, of a small number of plants appeared to have been damaged through, um, I guess, roadworks associated with the fire. However, the good news was that our community surveys found over a hundred plants in flower at a population that hadn't been seen for some years, and this enabled a, a really genetically diverse seed collection. Terrastylus oreophylla was perhaps the species we were most concerned about, and fortunately its creek line habitats managed to dodge the fires, but we only found a fairly small number of plants at just two sites, and so this species remains in a very precarious position. Good news was the discovery of four new populations of Caledonia tessellata, in large part because of the intensive survey work done by um, orchid enthusiasts in East Gippsland, I guess getting out after the fires and, and searching for new populations. All of the leek orchids in our project showed really impressive flowering, which was likely on the back of some conducive springtime rains. And so that is good news, but it does highlight some of the limitations of a short-term project in that we can't really say much about the overall population response to fire. 
However, it has been very useful in establishing some of the ecological issues that would be uh, important to do more work on. We've shown that all of our study species require pollinators for reproduction. You can't leave them to self-pollinate like you can with some plant species. The leek orchids show very high levels of fruit set in the wild, which is terrific. But for the other species we worked on, the fruit set's quite low. And that's not unusual for orchids, but it means that if we want to generate seed for conservation purposes, you have to physically go and pollinate the plants by hand yourself and then often bag the seed to protect it from herbivores. Speaking of herbivores, they were a persistent issue for the grassland species that we worked on, but for the orchids that inhabited the wet forests of East Gippsland, herbivory wasn't a very common feature. When it did happen in abundance in the high country, there was often feral species such as um, brumbies to br blame for it. One of the good things about um, combining seed collection and propagation within a project that also involves citizen science surveys is that we found a really large number of plants, which meant that we were able to collect uh, seed from a bigger number of individuals and, um, and make genetically diverse seed collections. Germination trials are underway at the Royal Botanic Gardens. And in good news for five of our species, we already have at least 200 seedlings germinated and growing in the lab. And so the longer term plan is to have germinated enough seed to at least be able to see 200 plants through to adulthood over the next couple of years, which will then form a, an ex situ collection for future work and conservation. Where do we go to? Next, for many of these rare species, very little is known about the fine details of their habitat requirements. Similarly, for most of these species, we don't know what are the animals involved in pollination. And this is quite important if you're seeking to establish new populations of orchids, is that you need to make sure that the animals that pollinate them are actually there, otherwise, it's essentially a gardening exercise where you put out a bunch of orchids and none of them reproduce. So this is important in, dis in establishing sites where we could reintroduce these species in the future. For the grassland species, management of herbivores and fire are probably also important and haven't been studied much. So with that, I'd like to wrap things up by thanking our collaborators again, in and in particular, the community volunteers that put in so much effort into this project and also Delps and Parks Victoria. Thank you.